You are listening to Off Planet Radio at offplanetradio.net and offplanetradio.com. And we are live. It is Off Planet TV. I'm Randy Moggins. Um, it is, it's Wednesday night, uh, July 22nd, 2015. And we are broadcasting live over Conscious Consumer Network. Um, it has been a very interesting week in a lot of ways. Um, we were supposed to have a major interview, and that interview will be coming up. But uh, it's very interesting what happens when you hit a nerve with the people who control the systems on this planet. And as a result of that, the interview that I had planned to do, which would have ran tonight, unfortunately um, got undermined by the powers that be. We suddenly developed all kinds of emergencies and um, wound up with uh, lost time for everybody involved. So we're going to do it again. We're going to do it a little bit more undercover because I've got major information I want to bring out, and we'll start rolling some of that out in the show tonight. Um, it is, uh, well, the middle of the summer, and there is all kinds of activity going on as we enter into week two of Jade Helm, and we see the insurgency of the military-industrial complex uh, continuing to just penetrate every level of society right now. So, um, there's there's new information coming out tonight we're going to go 90 minutes i have on the line with me from long island new york my friend my co-host chris holly is here good evening chris good evening glad to be here looking forward to our chat tonight randy yeah and that's really what it is this is going to be a pretty mm-hmm. loosely structured show you know the whole concept of a show um in terms of what we do a lot of times, Chris, I think there's too much show business in this business, this cottage industry, of the paranormal now. And so I'm kind of looking forward to just doing kind of a loose, free-rolling conversation with you tonight and catching up, because I know you've got a lot of things on your mind. We've had uh, conversations over the last couple of days where we've discussed some issues that have to do with... Uh, well, the world of the paranormal and what's going on with um, all of the phenomena that's in the sky right now, all of the things that are going on on the ground, and what it is about uh, basically people absolutely losing it these days. Well, you know that one of my pet peeves with the, the paranormal and the way it's represented all over, be it television or the internet, books, whatever, is that it goes nowhere. It's on a rat wheel. Um, They take and, first of all, talk about the same old events over and over and over and over and over. Yes, we know we've got it. It, That happened. There were, you know, lots of people that were interested in it. They talked it to deaf people. There's like no more to be said about a lot of these issues. There's no news there. And then the other thing we do besides take the same old stories and regurgitate them to nauseam is that we take and report, and I do it because I feel guilty. I just put up a whole bunch of orb stories because all these people emailed them to me. So I decided just to put it out there just like they told me and people can do what they want with it. But the problem is we report these things and say, okay, this was seen here, and this was... Uh Uh-oh, did we lose her? Yeah, we did. Now we lost Chris. Real early in the cycle, we lose Chris. Not good, not good. Um, Hang in there. Uh, She's going to call back in. And again, just by way of introduction, uh, Chris Holly. You'll see her website uh, domain on the on the webpage tonight, endlessjourney.blogspot.com. Um, 
what Chris has to bring to the table with the paranormal is that she's been reporting on it independently for um, many, many years, over a decade, certainly on this particular website. And she's experienced, she is a, 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 an experiencer herself, and she is also uh, one of the most authentic reporters in the area of paranormal that I've ever known years ago when I got familiar with her work <clears throat> I basically pursued Chris to get an interview Chris you back with us yeah I'm sorry I was just thrown into the, the world of the, into the abyss yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, but I, I want to pick up because I was on a roll let me please just finish by saying we're at the point now stop saying yes there's UFOs and I saw one and this is what I saw and then just walking away we have to go to the next level now. We have to figure out what's going on, who, what, and where, and how are they doing these things, and move a next level up. Where society seems to know they just want to stay, keeping it like a scary story that's fake, that gives them chills, and then walk away from it. Well, it's time now we do more. We want more. We need to know more. But we don't seem to be able to go there or want to go there or do go there. So so that's a big complaint that I complain to you, Randy, about all the time. Well, and it is, you know, it's phenomena driven and experience driven, Chris, but the analysis of the phenomena itself is going to be, and maybe here's where we start with this. Um, I think too many people have spent too much time on the phenomena without realizing that behind the backdrop of that is something bigger going on. Uh, help me out here. What am I trying to say? That that basically we are trying to prove phenomena that's not repeatable. The number of people who see phenomena, report phenomena, is voluminous, and yet at the same time, we don't get any kind of quorum on what these experiences are because they're so subjective to each one of us. Is there somewhere in that there was kind of a question from well, your, it, go ahead. Yeah, yeah it, it's true. Just like falling in love is different for every person. But once you fall in love, do you just stand there and say, Oh, okay, well that was good and walk away. Or exactly, then do you do, exactly, do you yeah. pursue it? Do yeah. you make it what you need it to be? Do you get answers? Do you form a family? Do you have children? You know, it's different for each person, but you don't just let it stand there and walk away. And that's what we do with things we do not understand. And I don't under I don't get it. Aren't we curious by nature? Maybe not. I don't know. But um, I can't seem to, in anything I do, whether I write something or say something or take someone and shake them by the shoulders I cannot yeah. seem to get it off of this one place which is entertainment and that's nice and walk away we all need I mean we have enough people for whatever reason they have been either chosen or coincidence or providence I don't know what it is but they have seen things we have enough of them to know that there's something out there that these things are controlled by something we do not understand. And you can take this and put it in any subject of the paranormal, be it UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, whatever. It's something that's going on that we just let float in the air and do nothing about. So how do you, how do you move forward from a place where no one wants to move from? That's the problem I'm having to the point where I get so disgusted, I just want to walk away and say, look at society, if you don't want to know, if you don't want to protect yourself, if you don't know, want the knowledge you need to proceed in life, because it's only a matter of time where so one of us, the next guy, the guy next to him, someone is the next to see something, encounter something, or deal with something. But if you don't want any knowledge or, or no nothing to do with it and just want to blindly walk into it fine but I don't get it as soon as I've had and you have had unusual things happen to us the first thing we did was go out and seek answers 
why doesn't everyone else? That's my question. Well, it goes into a question of consciousness. And I, in, in this regard, I guess we have to ask ourselves, why are only a select few people experiencing, seeing phenomena, or are they? Is it maybe, is there, is there a type of hypnosis which keeps people blinded to what's clearly going on around them. And my point being, and you and I have talked about this, you can be with a group of people, you can look up in the sky, you see something, you know what it is, you've seen it many times before, and yet other people around you don't see this. I think it's part denial and refusal to say it. I do, rather than the rest of us being selected all that that could be possible too that there are some people that are meant to see it and others not but I tend to think people have absolutely trained themselves not to want to see this not to want to believe in it and controlled and you know we talk about this all the time by their being their digital zombies by uh, uh, the technology that they have allowed to come into their life and completely remove their humanity, which is what's happening, and form them into this other non-human type being that is numb to all those things because they are being controlled and trained to be numb to them. So we have a lot going on right now. I think a turning point in uh, in, in history of at least being human that is is extremely dangerous, and right in front of us and now that people refuse to I mean try to suggest someone put away their handheld gadget or phone or stop staring at it at, at, when they're you know with a group of people and they get insulted and defensive that is not normal yet it's the way of life now in our society we're going down the rabbit hole Randy and it's not a good thing this is the dominant theme of everything that I am researching right now. Um, transhumanism, cybernetics, the digital revolution, this uh, <clears throat> AI slash quantum computing threat that we're seeing, which is even a, a, a component of Jade Helm, because what we've learned is that Jade is actually a computer system called Jade 2 that's an artificial intelligence quantum computing system that's used to quote from the informants and the information on the inter internet, command and control the human domain. The human domain. In other mm -hmm. words, now, according to the military, Chris, we are basically something that needs to be commanded and controlled our consciousness, our brains, our physical movements, our purchasing habits, everything that we do is now being trajectoried to be mapped, predicted, analyzed, and then dealt with as necessary by something that's not even human. Well, that, that's how I see it. <laughs> that's what I see, see happening. And look how easily it was done just take and addict us and that's what has happened addict us to the technology and the technology will then tell the human race what to wear how they should look what they should think who should they like who should they hate what they should be uh, um, uh, doing uh, with their time off yet they don't want them ever to be disconnected from that control so now we have the phones they never put down now, the phones that are going on the wrists. How long do you think is before you're actually, you know, chipped right into to the Internet and controlled that way? People have allowed themselves to be addicted and controlled by this technology. And you said something very interesting, the military. You said that word and it popped right into my mind. What is the first um, obvious way any type of mil military would go about destroying a, an enemy. Well, divide and conquer. Well, what do you think people are being done to you? You're being divided by way of your bubble that you encase yourself with, your technology that you're addicted to, 
and you've lost complete time with the person sitting right next to you or across the table from you. Families don't sit around and talk without the phones or the TV on or something going on. It's constant interference with the technology as it continues to control you. How about people that can't go more than 90 seconds without looking at some kind of technology? Right. That that's yeah. that's control. How about the fact you can't have a conversation, or worse, you don't want to have a conversation with? I'm sorry, someone sneezed in my house. <laughs> I don't know that's, if you heard that. It was really loud. That's that's and, at, um, the atmospherics for the show, actually. Yeah, yeah. and um, y- you know, you are easily controlled once you are divided away from your fellow humans. You've lost the ability to have conversations. You've lost the ability to have face-to-face, look at each other and communicate. You take your phones on your dates. I don't know if people are ever going to have romance or, or, or build families when they barely want to, you know, be in the oh, same well, place. Oh, they don't want you. But they, oh, by the way, they don't want you reproducing anymore either. Take one of these smart – this is for the guys now. Take one of these smartphones – Stick it in your trouser pocket every day for about six months, and you're going to pretty much reduce any possibility of reproducing. Um, these phones good, are putting good point. massive amounts of radiation, massive amounts of microwave radiation, proven to injure tissue, proven to interfere with normal cell growth, and proven to disrupt the, the human well, every aspect of the human energetic life cycle, certainly the uh, the, the cycle of our um, our inner chemistry. So, you know, go ahead. That'll work out real well for you. Carry one of those phones around in your pocket. In fact, get a big old patch and strap it over your belt buckle every day. That'll work out <laughs> real well. <laughs> it's very funny, but it's absolutely true. And then if you actually think, well, maybe having a marriage or a family or a partner or a kid or something might be nice in life, just hold on. You will be bombarded with information that that's not cool. That's not in, you know, you wouldn't be, you know, one of the crowd, you wouldn't be one of the herd. And that's how I look at society now. They're like a bunch of sheep or any animal you want to think of them, hogs, whatever. And they go, and they're all herded over here and they all dress the same and they're, they're herded over there. And they're all foodies making a certain kind of shake or that you're only eating kale. And then rrr, they're herded over there and they're only watching these TV shoes. And they're, rrr, over here. they are completely void of individuality. And it, it's, it's, it's terrible. Cool. You just so, described Facebook and most of social networking. I mean, what did we get for weeks? We were assaulted with Bruce Jenner um, becoming... Yep. Uh, Caitlin, like anybody cared or anybody cares about what goes on in the Cardassians and the trash culture of network TV. But these are the memes we're fed. And, you know, it's interesting. Here we are. We're being fed transsexuality. And look, here's the thing. I could give a rat's butt less what Bruce slash Caitlin does or anybody else does in their private life. My point is, why do I care about this? The answer is I don't. But there is another it's being, agenda. It's being force fed to you for many reasons. One, it keeps you from looking at the real issues that you should be focused on. And two, for some reason they want that like third idea, this trans into something other than male or female going on. And I'm a New Yorker world. I know a cross-dressing old man when I see one. Exactly. And this transgender stuff, I believe, exists, but in few people, he's not one of them. He's what we call here the Fire Island people, New York City, Greenwich Village area, a cross-dresser, an old guy that likes to put on pantyhose, period. And, you know, it's being made into something it isn't and fed to the predominantly youth of America as normal. Again, it's a way to divide and conquer and absolutely get rid of that family unit stuff. Get rid of that, everybody. You know, you don't need to be attached to a family. No, not if you're going to be a controlled little 
you know, a peon that just follows what you're told in the future. And that's exactly where this, this is going. And I, I don't want to be so hard on people, but for God's sake, tell somebody to turn off their phone, turn off their computer, and spend three weeks just with people they like, doing things they like outside, away from their house, not connected to anything. And they carry on. There's a thing talking about Facebook that they roll on their timelines or what uh, could you could you survive three weeks without your computer or, or, or off the internet or could you well if you can't then you better go get some help by a trained physician because it's a machine you cannot turn off a machine for three weeks well and you miss all they these you miss- lost you miss all those selfie photo ops too. I, it's it's yeah. terrible. The Facebook well, page just, becomes naked because you haven't been taking pictures of yourself enough. The uh, <laughs> the narcissism <laughs> behind that is just unbelievable. It's like or their cat or their dog or give me I get a up break. in the morning now, <laughs> but I look at me, and then me looks at you through a picture with me <laughs> with me it's all about me in the phone and the device the device right. that i become i'm becoming the device right what's happening and there is no tie to anybody else usually you are this entity wrapped in this technical bubble of fantasy because it is not reality and you live in there and don't ever come out where do you think that's going to take you in your future Now, I know it affects their jobs because we have had employees our whole lives. My family, we've owned companies, and we've had terrible problems with this because we don't allow them to do it. We don't allow connection to Facebook at work or using your cell phones at will while you're supposed to be working and doing something else. And it causes, I can't tell you how many people just walked away, and it was good-paying jobs because they couldn't do it, didn't want to do it. So, hey... We're going down, as I said, a very slippery slope very, very quickly. And uh, I don't know, Randy, what do you say? How do you shake people to what they're actually doing? Being divided, conquered, controlled, and brainwashed and get them to stop their fascination with this addiction to this type of technology. The technology is a vector into something else that is going on with the human condition right now. And since you brought this up, I guess we'll go ahead and delve into this article. We're gonna what we're gonna do, folks, is we're gonna cover some stuff that Chris and I have been talking about and some of the articles that both of us has posted over the over the last month or so um, to try and flesh out some of what we're talking about in terms of the concepts here. And so I got an, I have an article here that I wrote July 2nd. This actually, I posted this to Facebook and then it went out on the website um, right before the 4th of July. And the article is called Behemoth Cometh. And uh, this was basically my response to a whole bunch of things that have been going on in, in social media and, and in generally media itself, because that's kind of the world that I live in right now. There's a tremendous amount of narcissism within the media. And let me just say this. There are wonderful people doing alternative media as well. There are people whose hearts are genuinely in getting out the truth and getting out the information. But let me go through this article real quick. And Chris, you can stop me anytime you want to do a commentary or something. The idea that this is, is basically like to just, read it. just to flesh this out. So yeah. I wrote, seriously, the time for playing around with glib comments, cute cat pictures, racist, sexist, partisan nitpicking, and endless pursuits of economic gainsaying of all types has to end. All, I repeat, all of your institutions, government, military, religious, political, social, sexual entertainment uh, parenthetically that means entrainment by the way entertainment is entrainment all of your isms have been taken over by a soulless heartless artificial intelligence 
Humanity had better learn to recognize one another or it, capital I-T, will consume you. The distractions of church burnings, false flag terrorist events, flag banning, Bruce Jenner, gay marriage, events designed to seize your lower energies and titillate, inflame, arouse, anger, or assuage you. Whoever you are, whatever you believe, the polarities are designed to turn us against us, and it will win. This weekend, take time away from your devices, from your selfies and Facebooks, from TV screens, nightclub scenes, and magazines. Go somewhere, quiet, and fucking listen. Then begin to extend compassion towards others of your kind without prejudice. The defining characteristic of human is compassion. It does not have compassion. It is the rising quantum nano AI 4D behemoth that wants to command and control the human domain. It hates humans. That is why its only emotional correspondence is hatred. It knows that if we ever get our hearts together, it is finished. I personally am reassuring I am personally reassessing everything. Social media is a failure. Internet, so-called alternative media, is a failure. Subdividing faster than a paramecium, more bitter than wormwood, and the source of endless ego tripping, it is a vanity that is unsustainable. I may go dark, I may seek another medium, I may adopt an attitude of benign scorn, I don't know. I do know that unless and until humans begin to act in accord with the law of one, we're screwed. More later. Well, when you wrote that, I was very, very um, happy to see it. And I thought, boy, that's right on at the right time. Um, and I hopefully it went out in the right place that enough people will read it. And um, may, may I make a little bit of a commentary now on it? Absolutely. Okay. What Randy is telling you is that you're losing your humanity. And what I would like to suggest is that you're doing it willingly because you were born with choice. Many people are born in areas where the idea of free will or choice seems very unlikely because of their circumstances, but there still is always choice on what you are able to think and want to think and do think unless you give that over. What I see is that we are given choice in this life. That is our gift of, of, of being here. That's what your soul has been given when you arrive in the human form choice and will to be what you should and could and, and, and need to be. We have stopped making good choices and are rushing down this road of complete control and giving over your free will and choice to becoming something other than human. And you need to stop it. Because if you think you are not being fed, brainwashed, Every single time you watch television, listen to um, any type of information on, on the internet or, or radio, anything like that is constantly brainwashing you to think a certain way, under, uh, give away your free will and just be taken over. If you really want to know something, you have to stand back after listening to many different ideas on the same subject and then go research it on your own and then turn everything off and think it out then you have an opinion but five minutes just listening to a sound bite or something on the in, uh, on facebook or what your friends think it's not thinking it's not free will and it's not choice but it is the road to the end of the human race so I hope you listened. Hello? Completely gone. No, I'm here. 
You didn't lose me. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, I guess what we're trying to say, and this may tonight be the anti-show, um, as I said to you I, and I, Brandy. You having no, trouble? No, it is. We're 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 fighting for them. I know. How is that anti? Yeah. Well, no, no. We're fighting what I'm saying for is, them. I'm not interested in doing a smooth, polished show tonight. As I was oh, telling no. you and Biggie before we went on air tonight, I don't feel particularly well for some reason today. And I don't feel photogenic. I don't feel like being on camera. But I also don't feel like dropping the opportunity to sit here tonight and talk about this. And I'm not interested in doing a smooth, polished, produced radio show or TV show. The media has become... More, Marshall McLuhan said in the 1960s, the media is the message. That, that was paraphrased later by another writer who said the medium is the massage. Well, the media is the vector by which we've bought into the machine, the it. And if you want to read this article, it's on the website at offplanetradio.com. Uh, I sort of run a micro blog there. I don't put a lot up, but I put things up that I think are interesting. It is intelligent technology. The epitome of it is um, probably right now this ridiculous Apple Watch that's come out. Oh, God. It will now... You know, there was a time back when I was a kid. Remember Dick Tracy, the uh, wristwatch TV? Yep. Well, we've, we've, we've now seen that. We've now seen the reality of all this gadgetry with the dark side. These devices have the ability, the ability to track you globally using GPS built into every one of these devices, whether it's an iPhone, an Android, um, the Apple Watch, or any of the other half dozen products that they've put on the market. Anything that's connected device has the ability to track you. The insidious part now is that these new devices are also having biometrics built into them that monitor your, your vitals, your moods, your blood pressure, any uh, pupil dilation, um, skin temperature, every aspect of your physical being is now capable of being monitored remotely at any point on the planet. Add to that the fact that we live in a world now of fear porn where the only news on TV is the news that inspires the things that I named in this article. I was rather specific about this because it really is the vector by which they get us, which are these lower chakra energies that they want to harvest on a continual basis. Does this begin to sound familiar? What have we said for years about the ETs and the fact that we kind of sense that they're harvesting something from us, that they're harvesting an energetic, uh, possibly the soul itself, but it's basically designed to go into the lower base level responses, which are fear, rage, passion, anger, anything that moves us away from our heart chakra and moves us into our lower energetic system. And, and can I add that there's also, besides that, plus that, plus what Randy just said, ETs that possibly have gone this route themselves and given away so much of their biological being that they cannot reproduce anymore and need to come and harvest stuff from us just to be able to continue on with their own reproduction. Yeah. And with that said, um, if you want to continue sexting and putting your cell phone down your pants and sending out pictures, and if that's your sex life, where do you think you're headed? And that is something that you just don't want to hear because yeah. you don't want to stop it. And and that that's a shame. And if giving up sex is where you want to go, well, you're on your way. Congratulations. Well, I don't know how far down this road we go before we just basically become robots and zombies. Um, there's a point where even the over-sexualization. I mean, is anybody really shocked by Bruce Jenner? I mean, and I don't want to beat this to, it's just to me the epitome of the manufactured story of the year right now. 
nobody's really shocked. But what they want to do now is they want to not only normalize it, but they want to emulate it. They want to make it the norm in a way that it's better than normal. Um, right. You, you look at the agenda. Uh, so that it's cool. It's yeah. cool. It's in. You know, oh, my son just wore my dress out to, to you know, his senior dance. Isn't that cool? I mean, that's exactly where they're going with this. And I'm sorry, people. That's not a good place to be. <laughs> you know, if you want to cross-dress, cross-dress, fine. If you are a really transgendered person born with that situation and it does exist, my heart goes out to you, and I do hope you can find your way. But do I want my kids constantly looking at this as maybe a choice that they really don't need to have? <laughs> no. Well, the other side of it is that that transition goes into the next transition. Um, the fact that people are identity conflicted isn't really my issue. The fact is that you cannot change a man into a woman because the chemistry itself is completely different. Uh, doctors do surgical procedures they, pres they prescribe hormones, they do all kinds of implants, they cut things off, they paste things on. I mean, it's, it's a horrible process if you think about it. But at the end of the game, yeah. you are not gonna alter who you are chemically. You, your basic gender is determined at a level that, well, at least superficially in mainstream medicine, we don't have the ability to manipulate because it's genetics. And genetics is where they want to take us. But they want to take us to another place, another trans. The other trans is transhuman. So it will seem normal to bridge from man to machine when you can bridge from man to woman, woman to man. What I'm saying is this is not about the politics of sexuality. I've always said that the, that the gay movement was political. The people who were homosexual, the people who have... Uh, whatever their identity is in terms of their preferences sexually, that's a personal matter. That's a liberty matter. I have no problem with that. What I have is that a long time ago it was politicized, and then everything was tacked together under this banner called LGBT. I can tell you right now, lesbians and gays have very little in common with transgendered people. First off, lesbian and les a lesbian woman likes women, a gay man likes men. Transgender people don't know what they are. They're not gay. By definition, they're something else. And so when we go to that place where we begin to accommodate the tiniest fraction of a fraction, simply to make it seem normal that we can be altered and transformed like so much clay, then we've opened the door for science to say, okay, so you want to be Superman? Great. Here's the implants. Absolutely. It's the road to the demise of humanity. You can't be that if you're human and a human male or female or whatever. You can't do that. You can't have a family and, and, and live in that circumstance. You can't be part of anything if you're not, if you're not human and you're part machine and that's where they're taking you. And not only that, if they don't want to make you all robotic-like, they at least want to control you. And humans have shown a definite weakness in the, the wanting and the willingness to give over their free choice, their free will, and be controlled. And all of this is your road to the end of humanity, and it's coming now. It's not a thousand years ahead. It's not, you know in 500,000 years what it's going to be like it's being forced down your throat now by addicting you to technology technology is a great thing it should be used for work it should be used to help our days become easier with what we're working on and communicating but it's not that it's not that anymore Randy Saturday night I give you anywhere in the United States try to find a movie on television that you can watch with your family that is some type of interesting, nice story that does not involve somebody's guts being ripped out, 
tremendous violence, blood smeared all over the, the, the screen, monsters eating people and ripping their hearts out and guts hanging out of their mouths. You can't find anything but that kind of gore. Well, that's what also makes the violence that goes on in our country seem normal to us so that when something horrible happens, we're not deeply offended when we should be. And we are sort of just molding ourselves into this violent, accepting, cold-hearted, distracted type of society. If that's what you all want, go ahead. Give away your free will. Don't speak up. Don't put your foot down. Don't put down your phone. Don't make your kids do it. Just continue what you're doing because your road is short and it's coming right up on you. So get ready to dive over that cliff because it's it's there. It's interesting you bring up violence. And again, it goes back to this article and the idea that what is happening is we're being desensitized. And at the same time, if you look at violence on TV, there was a time, and I remember it, and I know you do too, when we had what was called suspense. You could have a murder, but you had a murder that took place off screen or you had certain clues. Now, everybody on TV, they just pull a gun out and they blow somebody's head off and there's blood all over the screen. I mean, a hole the size of a cannonball in this person's body. They throw them on an autopsy table. They rip all their organs out right on camera so you can see it in full graphic view. Tell me this is not desensitizing us to the sanctity of the human. Where did we get the idea that somehow this graphic violence was a good thing for us, that we were supposed to see in great detail uh, these endless uh, CSI-type scenes on TV uh, of dead bodies and corpses riddled with bullets and rigor mortis and uh, just this incredible array of biological gruesomeness being paraded before our eyes while we're eating dinner on the sofa, by the way. Isn't that great? <laughs> and then you have a society of, I'm sorry, people, but beavis and buttheads that go, eh, 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 oh, that was really <laughs> cool. That was really cool. cool. No, it wasn't really cool. And you're an idiot. <laughs> Please, you know, we're really, really screaming at people. But if we don't, what's going to happen to you? If some of you don't stop to think, where do you think you're going with all this? Is it really that important that you neglect your children? And don't tell me you're not, because you are. And your children are neglecting you and that you are risking everybody's life by texting while you're driving or looking at your phone. Or did you ever watch some of the parents going shopping with their kids and they have their phone up and they talk, who the hell are you talking to? Your family's right there with you. Isn't yeah. that important to you? Talk to them. You know, you got to stop this behavior. There is nothing or no one that important that you have to spend every single second on the phone talking to them. It's just not important. You can shop and actually read with what you're looking at and figure out what you're buying and talk to the people there. You don't need to be yelling and screaming on your phone and, and being obnoxious and pushy and extremely dangerous. You know, you can't do this stuff when you're driving. I know you think you're Superman, but you're not. All you are is a, a deadly accident waiting to happen. All these things have to stop. You have children, pay attention to them. You have a sister and brother, go sit and talk to them. You have old parents, give them some love. You know, you have a spouse, be romantic with them. But put away your damn gadget. <laughs> Otherwise, your own gadget isn't going to be working for long. <laughs> Well, yeah, they say that what you don't use eventually atrophies. Right. The whole, I, and and I, I won't be as crude as to follow up that last remark of yours, <laughs> but I will say that the heart is what begins to atrophy. Um, what, what I see in the culture now are people who are so malignantly blinded by pursuit of money and power and ego and vanity. Again, going back to this article, you know, everything that we do now 
I think we have to begin to measure it from a different metric, and that metric really does have to be what's in your heart. We're going to do it imperfectly. We're still going to be wrong because we're human. That's actually the beauty of being human. See, we thought, we thought all along that our flaws as humans were that we weren't perfect. The perfection of the human is the human risks these experiences of life as a learning experience, which is both comedy and tragedy, uh, the love story, the, um, the horrible things that go wrong in our lives. Those are the things that make us human. And with the cabal, the rulers so-called of this planet, both on-world and off-world want, is they want predictable. They're willing to accept the messiness of getting there, but what they really want at the end of the day is they want us to be predictable so they can control us. And if they can hurt us like cats, if they can put us into the mentality where we're constantly going back to the system, looking for the gratifications, again, the money, the ego, the power, the vanity, you know, any, the endless pursuit of what? More senseless sexuality, better porn? I don't know. But I can tell you that that is the process that humanity cannot go down. If we go down the road into transhumanism, we do not come back from it. We are simply, as was in the Star Trek series, the Borg, assimilated into something that is not human anymore and doesn't have a soul. Absolutely. Well said. Well said. And, and individual, being an individual is very important. Being <clears throat> alike, the same copy as the next guy, is really not that appealing, I don't think, to anyone. And that is what we've been trained to do. We've been trained that we have to watch love, gory, horrible violence and accept it to be cool. We've been trained that we all need to have expensive new cars or there's something wrong with you. We've been told that we all need big expensive houses that you cannot afford and have to work three jobs and neglect your family over. We've yeah. been trained to go about living in a way that is not individual or normal or good or what each of us actually want. What you need to do is live your life the best you can in the way you want. And if it's a tiny house or a little Cape Cod stuffed with children, that should be your business. If you want to drive an old car for 10 years because you love it and don't want to have a big car payment, that should be your business. And you should not be criticized for it or put down about it or frowned upon or feel to be less than the next guy. Because the next guy, if he's following that path, is just in terrible debt, unhappy, trying to be something he's not and completely lost of his own individual personality. So, you know, make the choice take back your will take back your life and stop being a sheep stop being a cow stop being a little piglet in the group find your way and break the addiction to the technology that is trying to take your humanity and completely control you it's the one thing you can stop a lot of other things are going to be out of your control but at least you can use your own mind to think and live your own life the way you feel you should. So, you know, consider these things. They're very important, especially if you're young. You mentioned earlier about the mobile phones and about the amount of energy that these things are putting out. This is, you know, pretty much a modern, I'm showing my phone on the screen, you can't see me, Chris. But this is basically a modern Android telephone. This phone gets so warm in my pocket that I have to take it out. It's nearly burned me. I no longer carry this in my pocket. In fact, most of the time, I plug it in someplace, I put on a headset, and I do not have the phone on my person. And even the risk of using, like, Bluetooth earbuds now, this is still radiation. But this thing here gets hot enough, it'll burn your skin. Um, what we need to understand about this and the research that I'm doing now, and there's more coming on this, is our energetic system, our bodies, our multiple bodies. You're, you think of yourself as flesh and blood 
but you contain other bodies. You have a light body, you have an energy body. You have an aura as anybody who has modest skills as a clairvoyant can tell you, you can see people's aura. Well, the aura is part of the electrical field. What right, was starting, energy. It is. Now, these devices, all of them, whether it's the mobile phones, the Wi-Fi, um, the radiation that's coming off of microwave towers that are being used both for the mobile phones and for militarization of communications networks everywhere on the planet, um, everywhere now, they have the ability to basically jack into a location. All of these devices are integrating themselves into us as we're using them. I don't think anybody that's used computers for any period of time can argue this if you stop and think about it. I noticed this in the 1990s, probably in the mid 90s when I was doing a lot of, I was spending 14 hours a day on computers at one point. I was doing programming, I was doing marketing, I was doing all kinds of information intensive work. And what I began to notice was my attention span was starting to get shorter and shorter and shorter. Now I could sit at a computer for 14 hours, but reading a book became a problem. Paying attention to things in detail in real world became a problem. And so once I pulled myself away from this, and I, I have over the years tried to wean myself away from extent, excessive use of, of technology, at least to the point of taking very long breaks and even taking entire days or weekends away from these devices, simply to recollect my own focus, my own ability to concentrate. It began to scare me when I realized I wasn't sitting down and reading like three and four chapters of a book. First off, I'm a trained speed reader, so I don't have a problem with that. And secondly, I enjoy reading. It was simply the fact of the matter that information on the computer is moving in units of time much smaller than the human consciousness. The human consciousness is actually kind of outside of time, but it is designed to conform to uh, a more relaxed pace in terms of our senses. Computers are speeding us up. Chris, what have you noticed about energetic fields around you from time to time? Well, uh, I realize that, you know, I guess most people don't understand it, that they, are, they run off of a, a, an electric charge, that that gave them life. That's that's what yeah. formed them into a human being, and that they carry that charge till they die, and then it doesn't. Energy never just dissipates; it just changes form. So you know you can think whatever you want. Some people say, "Oh, then it just goes in the dirt to grow corn," or maybe it's your soul, and you go on to complete the task of what your soul was developed for in the first place. That's my preferred choice. But um, you're absolutely right with the, the attention span. And it, it's not only just the attention span, it's the actual uh, mechanism of thinking has been completely changed and, te and tem uh, tampered with by way of the technology so that if things aren't given to people in sound bits, and you and I both have noticed that even if you try to make, write an article, and we learned long ago, people that do write, that you have to make things shorter and more compact all the time because the attention spans are so small that they won't read through a, a, an article. They'll read a little bit of it and then think that they understand it all and come back at you and maybe have an argument with you about something you wrote when it wasn't anything that you actually wrote. It's a few words they picked out and put together in their mind what they wanted it to be because they don't have the ability anymore to comprehend um, things when th they read them and the research that's needed to actually make opinions and, and learn things, you need to have a bit of uh, comprehension ability. And that's all been taken away by the technology where it's all sound bites and thrown at you or in a video real fast or tweeting. Things should be destroyed. You can't really communicate in just those few characters. Why do you try? I mean... <laughs> You're really 128, not. Yeah, 128 characters. I mean, what, what are you doing, people? Oh, yeah, that's really cute. 
that what you want to be a cute adult I mean well, that's, how you get, well, that, that's how you get all these 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 BRB um, you know right right the constant and, and, the, the, all the whole text language that I don't understand that I know my kids did it was almost like Morse code it was maddening but it, it was and now you've taken away your ability to learn to actually educate yourself as an adult to get through life to make opinions on voting, medicine, family decisions that may be vitally important in, to, to make for other people that you yeah. love, the care of your parents or a child or something like that, because you lost the ability to actually read, comprehend, and then maybe do a little research. If it isn't handed to you right away and told you right away, you don't want it and you don't want to listen. And whatever's told to you first and your friend told you that's, that's your opinion. No, it's not. You're just a regurgitating moron that does completely gave away your ability to be much more than that. If that's fine with you, great. But you're certainly not being your best. You're certainly not doing justice to the life that you were given. And you're like a, an embarrassment to the human race. But I hate to say it, but that's what most of you have become. Do you ever try to have a good in-depth conversation with a lot of people? on subjects that maybe are not, I don't know, Bruce Jenner or how big uh, Kim Kardashian's butt is, you really can't get anything out of them. Or or maybe who won the most, the biggest award in some kind of music thing, or, which, oh God, I could care less about. That's the thing that society wants to talk about. How about your future? How about the fact that the world's ready to explode, the economies may collapse, how about the fact you may have nowhere to live in 10 years if you don't get a hold of yourself and get interested in these things? How about the world may come to an end real quickly if you don't stop it? No, those subjects, we don't want to talk about that. That's not fun. Let's talk about the zombie movie we saw when he ripped his guts out and, and shoved it down the uh, old guy's throat who was homeless in the street who they were kicking and, and laughed. Goes, oh, 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 that's really cool. You got to stop it, people, really. You got to want more. You got to ask for more. You got to demand more, and you got to give more. But you can't keep doing what you're doing enough. Stop the madness. Get mad as hell. Interesting. That whole zombie thing it was actually a creation of intelligence operations going way back to the 1950s. By the way, it was designed basically to create the concept of a soulless golem walking around. And then Homeland Security picked up on it about three years ago, and they did this zombie apocalypse ad campaign that was, again, kind of designed to be ha-ha funny, and it's the same kind of a ha-ha funny on you because you are becoming the zombies that Homeland Security now thinks they need to manage by frisking you and fondling you and searching you yeah, through every airport terminal in and out of the country. It is the big joke. Again, the transhumanist joke is somehow that, well, you're not really human. You don't really have these rights anymore. Uh, we, as George Bush said about the Constitution, it's just a goddamn piece of paper. Well, you don't have any rights anymore. Why? Because you stopped being human, because you're soulless. Because you basically have said that you are nothing more than a consuming entity. You eat, you drink, you consume all manner of things in our market system. And therefore, you are simply another commodity that needs to be bought, sold, and regulated on the stock market of media. Well, I don't know how much more we can... You know, what else we can say? Now, you take today's society and you ask a person an opinion on something, let's say like religion or politics or uh, a science, something that's going on in the supposed space uh, realm programs or something like that. And they will give you an opinion and I started to say to them, well, if that's the way it really was, you'd be right, but actually that's not the way it happened they immediately get extremely angry and annoyed at you and will tell you, well, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about and march you up in a huff. Okay, fine. 
we got nowhere but went around in a circle and you still don't know what you're talking about. But if you take and pin them down, let's say uh, uh, the creation of life is to just, you know, a thing and you live and you die and that's it, right? And you say to them, why do you think that way? And they will say to you, and this could be a question about conception or religion or, or they say to you the word science because of science that's why and my answer always is well which science is that what exact science is that I'd like to know because you know if you're you're correct I want to know that and again they get angry and storm off because they don't know what they're talking about and I was a bit of an arrogant little creep when I was very young a little bit believed everything you know, a knee jerk to, to certain things, didn't think I had to think it out. And I had a, a professor that gave a class on thinking that changed my entire life and taught me how to think. And I also had a class on conception of, of life. And it showed, they had a film and they showed an egg and it being fertilized. And it wasn't during, of course, the act of sex. It was maybe two days later that the actual conception took place and it took that long for the sperm to make its way to the egg and then it showed the moment of conception and it looked to me like a little lightning bolt as the sperm entered that egg a little lightning bolt bolt of like energy hit and that was it it started dividing into what became a human being and I was thunderstruck by this where did that little bolt of energy come from? Why did it come? Was that the soul? Was that given to by the universe? And I understood for the first time that I didn't know what the hell I was talking about. And I didn't know what the hell was going on. And that I was ignorant and wrong about all the things that I was thinking up until that point. So all I can say to you, is you have to open your minds and understand you may be wrong on a lot of things too. But you know, in that moment, when you admitted you didn't know something, that was the beginning of wisdom. I mean, that really is where wisdom begins. We, in terms of intellectual knowledge right now, Chris, we have information up to our eyeballs, but we're ignorant, willfully ignorant, of the substance of knowledge because we're not applying it. We're simply processing facts like uh, like a food processor, I guess, a blender. Somehow or another, we just take all this data, we run it through the Cuisinart, and we come out with the opinion du jour, which we then tweet and post onto Facebook, and we say, hey, look what I think. And you put right. up a little pictorial meme. Put a put a cat picture up with it. That works real well. I I suggest you always put a cat picture up. I don't only know if it has a little, only if it has a little piece of fruit on its head <laughs> to make it look like a little helmet. And then you then you're then you're rocking it. But it, it, it's it's absolutely you know, the the truth. And people, if you say to me science proves it well then you've never been around a bunch of scientists in your whole entire life and are clueless because the worst arguments and fights i have ever been part of has been with a group of scientists they can't agree on anything and they all have different theories on everything and they fight like hell amongst themselves but they don't do that into the public. You know, they want to have this esteemed, you know, view of themselves. So if it's science that you're looking at, the whole science can't decide what they think moment to moment. So you really can't base anything on that because that's a, a rolling ball that never stops. And as soon as they figure something out, they realize they were wrong. And it, it's just the way it is. We're not too scientifically evolved as a society. Oh, don't get me wrong. There's people in our, our our grasps that are controlling us and using this technology too that do understand a lot of things but they're sure not going to share it with you science isn't the science you see in front of you the science you see in front of you is a religion you know if you want to date it back you can go the whole way back to probably newton 
Um, you can certainly go to Darwin, which Darwinism is nothing more than a religious doctrine. The idea that we climbed out of the primordial ooze with fins on our back and then developed vertebrae and went through five stages of monkey man in order to get to the place where we are today, which is basically intelligent monkeys. And by the way, we're headed back to monkeyhood right now. Well, that's that's a religion. You, there, I, I've read the literature for 30 years that's been published by by anthropologists and biologists, then and they can't find the quote missing link. But they continue to hold to the theory. Well, it's just a theory. It's not really a fact. But we premise our society now on Darwinism. Everything about our society is based on this concept of, of evolution coming from nothing vertebrate into something intelligent like a human being, rather than looking at the human being and realizing there is a creative force behind this. Oh, let us not use the G word here, because, well, if once we put that into the equation, then we've got real serious issues. And to me, Chris, you know, it almost feels like the whole ET issue, which has been burgeoning since the end of World War II, and way before that, by the way, seems to remind us of something, and that is that we may actually be unique as a creation in some way. Because I, for the life of me, cannot figure out what it is so fascinating about humans that these entities are flying around, taking people, experimenting on them, um, soul harvesting them, constantly tracking them to do what? Is this like a science project or is it something else? I think it's unfortunate probably everything. It's, uh, we might be a food source. We might be, I think, biological material because they went down this road, road in a more yeah. mechanical than, than yeah. biological at this point and can't keep creating what they want to or are without some biological material. I think that's part of it. I think that they are also trying to combine us into something else so that they are better suited to maybe space travel or just live here and harvest our earth for whatever. I think that we're way, that's like boom, explode your head. That's yeah. too hard for us to grasp. We yeah. really can't grab onto that. It's so big. And so beyond us. I mean, you're talking about life forms that have been here um, probably much longer than maybe we have or just advanced at a different yep. rate. And they can travel the universe, the universes, the dimensions, and we're still trying to figure out how not to kill each other because, you know, we're so busy killing each other. And, um, it, it, it's a whole different thing. We're just not there. We, we're not able to grasp that. Our minds can't wrap around it. We we can't figure it out. So, and let me say that I think any other kind of life form that's out there also started as we did with that electrical charge to live their life for whatever reason they need to go down that path. And um, all of it's probably connected and for reason maybe we all live all these life forms at one point or another in the form of a soul that goes all around I don't know nobody knows it's too big for us to grasp but it isn't just happenstance and it isn't just science or math in fact all those things prove out if you really look into it that that's impossible mm -hmm. it had to be some kind of intelligent design otherwise in the big bang we would have annihilated everything and it would annihilate it i mean and um there would be no mass left and nothing left to make the planets and the, and the solar system and the galaxies and the universe so you know it it's um it's we don't know and we have to be kind of happy with that right now because first of all we're allowing bigger issues right now uh, need to be sorted out and the one is that we're losing our humanity and we can't. And the second is we have to clean up our own planet and how we treat each other. We have to stop it. Just stop it. You can't have one guy with billions of dollars that he's throwing out the window and covering his dog's poop with $50 bills because he's so rich and in another place 
people just starving to death in the street. That's an out of balance planet. So until we kind of sort that out, I'm not saying everybody has to be equal. Everybody doesn't want to be equal. I don't want what maybe the next guy wants. I'm a hermit. I don't like being around crowds or people. That's me. Yeah. Yeah. I have friends that have to be in the limelight all the time, and they have to be. And I understand that. That's them. That's individuality, by the way, and that's fine. But um, we have to stop being such cruel, care, heartless, uh, violent animals. That that because that kind is what we are right now that are controlled easily and being led down a path of even losing the humanity we have I think at this point Chris we're going to take a break um, the opportunity to freshen up the tea and uh, do any other things that we need to do and uh, just rest ourselves for a few minutes uh, I think we're going we're gonna to head out into a break here it's so difficult because sometimes I know Big E's taking care of things behind the scenes. So um, we're going to sign off for this hour. When we come back, Chris, I'd like to talk a little bit about the red orbs that we've been seeing, especially on the East Coast. And oh, I my also, God. Uh, yes. uh, well, the, you wrote the article, so we're going to talk yeah. about it. We'll also <laughs> talk about this gravity well off the uh, coast of California at Malibu that's being reported by Robert Stanley. So we'll kind of fold into our commentary tonight a little bit of the paranormal. We'll do that when we return on the other side. This is Off Planet TV. I'm Randy Moggins, and uh, I think we'll let Max Headroom just kind of speak for us all right now. We'll be back in about six minutes. Okay.
And we're back here on Off Planet TV. I'm Randy Moggins, and with me on the line tonight from Long Island, New York, my friend and co-host Chris Holly. Thanks for joining us. Um, this is kind of a loose narrative type show tonight. Um, I was uh, actually feeling kind of under the weather before we went on the air, but as usual, what happens is you kind of re-energize when you get into the subject matter. And so um, we're obviously covering a lot of ground, but a lot of this is connected to some very important subjects that are kind of the hallmark of our time. And uh, welcome back for this next segment, which uh, we're, we're going to do sort of a shortened show tonight, but uh, for the next half hour, we're going to cover some more territory in the world of the paranormal. Uh, welcome back, my co-host for the night, Chris Holly. Welcome back. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Happy to join in. Chris, you uh, basically declared yourself on vacation, but unfortunately, you don't seem to get much of a break because people keep writing to you and telling you about things that are going on up in the air above them. I'm noticing this phenomena a lot now. We're starting to see a lot of consistent reports, and it seems to hit around the high mark of summer, but really it goes on uh, pretty much year-round. I think it's just that people are out more in the summertime and have an opportunity to see things in the sky. Let's talk a little bit about uh, summer, th summer 2015, and the orbs are everywhere. Your your blog article that you posted up on your your website. Yeah, I, I am on vacation and trying to turn <laughs> off the computer completely, and then I started getting just bombarded with emails and even a Skype call. And um, I, I you know I, I like put on my Facebook my my blog everything. I'm going to take some time off because I hate this stuff. <laughs> I need a break from from everybody needs a break from what they do. So anyway, I would check my email though every day because my family, my kids, all that would, you know, use the email. My my um, friends and I, they just use my business ones too because they otherwise I wouldn't read them. <laughs> and um, I started getting every day another orb, another orb, another red orb, another orb story. So finally I collected them, a bunch of them, and just put them up as an article and said, look at it, it would be wrong if I held on to this stuff and didn't share it. But people all over are seeing these red orbs and they all say the same kind of thing. There's a big red orb or pink, I think one person said, but red orb in the sky and it just hovers. Many times they drop little either silver or red orbs and then the thing will slowly move away because it was hovering and then just shoot, shoot straight away into the sky and um, this is over and over and over you, you can see them on on my site even a few people took pictures of them what they were looking at and I put them up as well um, and then the thing that pushed me over the edge is I was on the telephone with my sister and I opened my email and I opened the email and read the first one and it was from a woman that lived in my sister's town who had just seen a huge red orb outside hovering that dropped two other orbs and then this big round red one slowly floated out over the Great South Bay, which is a waterway on the way to the Atlantic Ocean, and then took off straight up and at tremendous speed and disappeared. So I said to my sister, you won't believe this. And I read her the email and she said, you know, that's funny. The woman down the street was telling me that her husband just saw a bunch of orbs floating over the, the bay too. So I thought, oh, this is ridiculous. And I, I took and I put them all up. And definitely, they come out. Well, I, I think it's that people are out more in the summer and just don't look up in the winter or go out that much <clears throat> and stand around looking at the sky. But every summer, for the last maybe five summers, I've been just constantly hit with this. We just saw an orb. There's an orb over our town. There's an orb over our house. This one couple, uh, a couple of years ago, on Long Island, had a 
pool party going on at night and people were all out in the pool and this big huge orb came and was not that maybe a few hundred feet over them and they were frozen in fear all just standing in the pool looking at this thing and they were scared to death that they were all going to be taken you know sucked up into this thing yet it just watched them hovered over them and then slowly circled them which would frighten me before it took off so these things not only are they out there they seem to be watching people maybe deciding which ones they want to mess with and which ones they don't but I don't think of them as friendly I had a very bad experience when I was very young with a red orb and um, it I believe took my husband and I at that time we have no memory of it except that we saw it at night in a tree and woke up the next day. We were in our bedroom standing looking out this window and it was way up right above a big tree. And we never saw anything like that. And the next thing I knew, we woke up laying on top of our bed. It was still made <clears throat> the next morning with our clothes on wrong, feeling very ill. And, um, that was my experience. I mean, it's more detailed, but I'm not going to take that now. But it was a, a life-changing event for me and for him. I'm no longer married to that person. And um, it was my my entrance into the fact that these round balls of whatever they are exist. My, my um, first knowledge of it was a first-hand experience encounter with one. Now, over the years, they are more predominant, and they're even bigger. They're larger. Now, they're big craft-sized things. They're huge, and they drop out these smaller ones that I don't know if they're the scouts or what that take off and go and spy on people, or I don't know what they're doing. All I can tell you is if you see one, it's not fun. You have to be careful. They can be dangerous. Try to get away from it. Get other people to see it with you. And as I always tell people, when you see something, don't call up your police or your fire department or your sheriff or whatever it is, your military, and say, there's a UFO over my head or over my house. You say, there's someone <laughs> shining strange lights into my backyard, or I think they're trying to you know, come onto my property. Can you get here right away? And they'll tear right over to help you. And then if you're lucky, they'll be able to, you know, I, I, eyeball whatever you're looking at and see it too. And then it's their problem as well, and they need to protect you. But don't ever, you know, say something else because they won't show up. So, or say that uh, there's someone <coughs> breaking into your house or there's strangers in the backyards or whatever you can and get the, the authorities there to see if they can see it too. But they are out there. And I just want to add this on, Randy, if you don't mind. Go I don't care who you are. If you go outside, put down your phone, put down whatever the heck you're playing with, and just go and look around and pay attention to your surroundings, and you look up in that sky and start to become familiar with it during the day and during the night, how it actually looks, it's only a matter of time. And it's impossible that you will not see something unknown. I guarantee each one of you will see something. And then you know for your very own self that they exist. These orbs, um, how long do you... Now, your sighting that you reported with your, your former husband, that took place, what, back in the 70s? Yes, in the 70s. Okay. About 1970s three or four I'm trying to trace the transition on this one you know and again it goes back Chris to this whole idea that we're not dealing with just one phenomena we've put everything we we categorize everything under these comfortable titles so we got UFOs okay so what is cigar shaped is it saucer is it elliptical is it uh, <clears throat> triangle and then we classify it from there the orb sort of breaks that whole thing because what you didn't know was while you were talking, I ran a video of 
uh, basically a giant orb ship that then proceeded to drop out uh, other orbs. Oh, great! This uh, and it was a it was a video that I actually had from somebody on Facebook. I'm not the orbs didn't look red to me in the light, but you know, people are taking pictures now with these uh, with these phones, so I'm not always sure that the colors corrected and they're they're shooting at night. So that appears to say these were white orbs. But the orbs sort of broke the paradigm in a way because I've seen, I've seen the large orbs and I've seen small orbs, tiny little, uh, maybe if you're viewing them in perspective about the size of a, 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 well, if anybody remembers what a silver dollar looks like about that size. But they also seem to pulse. They also seem to change size. So I'm not particularly sure that what we're talking about in terms of orbs is the same thing we talk about when we talk about traditional UFO type uh, craft. Well, I wrote an article not too long ago, which got a lot of play because of the silly title. I said, when it comes to orbs, size does matter. And um, what I wrote about was that with orbs, they are not all the same things. Some of them are, I believe, unidentified flying objects or could be categorized as UFOs. And they are big. They're the size of a large airliner, I would think, if you measured the length and everything and the circumference. Very big. And they are very interesting because I saw them too right after Sandy. My whole town did. And they were huge. They were also different colors. The red was like the leader, and then there were white ones. And they were plasma looking. It's the only way. They were not solid. They were not gas they were not see-through either they were something else so that it was an it was an object that you could identify and like put your hands around if you you know or or touch is what i'm trying to say it wasn't that you would just go through it like like a, a ghost or dust or something it had mass that's what i'm trying to say but it wasn't like solid it was something that we we don't understand and I didn't know what I was looking at. And you can see the twirling differences of material like in it, if you look into it. And it's very bright, but you can look right into it, which is unusual as well. That's a, a craft, I believe, and they are dropping things that are intelligently um, controlled to do whatever they're doing, look in houses, chase people, catch a rabbit. I don't know what they're doing, but they do it. There's other orbs that I believe are just energy coming from maybe a different dimension. And I think the little tiny orbs that people talk about are more spiritual. I think they actually actually energy of life force or a soul or something like that. I do believe in that too. So I think that orbs are all different things. And like you say, we throw everything in one category, like ghosts. We throw in shadow people, demons, or, or evil things, spirits of our relatives, angels. Everything is a ghost. Well, no, it's not. It's all different categories that we just throw in that category under, you know, ghosts. They're all different actual things. Same thing with um, UFOs. There's all different things that we call UFOs because they're unidentified, actually. But orbs... It's one division that has UFO or unidentified huge objects with intelligence in them. And then there's down to what I think is energy sources that have no human form or no form for us to uh, identify them in. So I don't know. Does that answer your question? Well, I don't think anybody's questions get answered real easily in any of this. <laughs> but, you know this is kind of the weird thing about it. I mean, the orbs that we see in this video are clearly the size of ships. I, mm -hmm. You look at them and they seem to be able to subdivide, drop other orbs off. So, you know, there's this interesting concept going on that these things are some kind of intelligence that wants to be seen now, that they're showing themselves more and more. Or maybe... 
I don't know, is it just because we have cameras now on our phones and YouTube is there to be able to report this? But, you know, orbs were a rare occurrence to my remembrance, going back and looking at even UFO case reports from the 60s, 70s, they seem to really kick up big time in, in the 90s was when I first began to notice and hear word of these of these orbs. Yeah, I, I think when I wrote that article about the, the red orb that I encountered, I was one of like, I didn't know anybody else that encountered such a thing except a relative. I had a relative that encountered a blue one and actually had like a bit of a fist fight with a shovel with it in in the in his backyard. But wow. um, that was that was uh, very. I'm gonna tell it to you it was a man was sitting in his backyard, and this is the thing I want you to listen to, Randy, for a reason. I wrote this article, and it was about a man who was sitting in the backyard with his wife at the picnic table when this huge, like the size of a dodgeball, you know the large balls the kids throw it at each other in gym? Mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. dodgeball blue light showed up in the corner of the yard and frightened them. And it first was just appeared, and then it started to circle them around the yard, around them sitting at the picnic table. The man said to his wife, get under the table. He didn't know what it was. He grabbed a shovel that they had laying there because they were planting, and he said, we're going to, when it goes on to the other side of the yard, we're going to run towards the house and run into the house. Went on the other side of the yard, and it was at this point just circling in the same pattern around them. And when they ran into the house, the thing shot straight across the yard at them, and the man took the shovel and hit it as hard as he could and it broke into multiple little round blue orbs that then joined back together into a big one. But they ran into the house and shut the door and they looked out and the thing then just shot up and away and was gone. And I wrote this story and the last sentence of the story, first I will tell you, I got many inquiries, comments and emails about did I really know this man and who was it and what did this man say and who, why don't you give his name? The last sentence in my story was, I know this story to be true because this man and this woman were my mother and father. However, since people don't read the entire article, <laughs> they continue to send me messages asking me, who were these people and how did I know them? So anyway, that was happened to my parents about, I don't know, maybe seven months, eight months after my husband and I encountered the red orb. And then there was no orbs in our life again until when I started. I, the, the big account thing I saw was after Hurricane Sandy. They flew right over the stop and shop. Uh, we had no lights, no anything going on at the time. We were devastated here. But they flew over, three of them. And they were huge, like the size of airplanes. And everybody saw them. So I, 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 that's all I can tell you. I wish I had answers. I don't. I don't think so much that we don't have answers. I, just, I, I don't think... I think we're working through a process of putting all this together right now. And again, this is why it's important that the so-called UFO community, paranormal community, kind of move on here. I mean, look, Roswell is an interesting story, but for 60 years, we have to give a rectal examination to Roswell <laughs> at, at the expense of, look at our friend Ken Pfeiffer, who's with New Jersey MUFON. There must be 10,000 photos of UFOs on that man's site. He reports out Absolutely. every day on new activity, and we got to get Ken on again. Um, my point being, we've been awfully good at data collection, but we haven't been real good at integrating facts um, regarding what goes on around the phenomena, mainly because mainstream journalism and mainstream society has rejected the people who are contactees abductees and experiencers and labeled right. them as nutcases 
whereas we've missed the opportunity to take in data from a standpoint that something is trying to communicate with us. I mean, I do think, and Chris, you and I have talked about this, we are clearly at a turning point for humanity. We're either going to ascend, meaning that spiritually we go to a place where one by one, but in waves, humanity can transition into a spiritual consciousness or humanity is going to be consumed by the technological board and there will cease to exist that thing which, which was once known as human. And that's the free will and choice that we're talking to you about. Yeah. yeah that's I mean, it right there. Just what he said. That's your choice. This is, this is the time when we need to be able to examine the reports that are being given to us by the people who are experiencers. I mean, uh, I have a friend of mine who is a reporter uh, on, on paranormal activity, much like yourself. And the tagline on her email is, I will believe you. Now, I have to tell you, there are people I have not believed. And there are times when I know I'm being fed a line of you know what. But Absolutely, over, me too. Over, overall, you know, we as researchers, we as people who have a background in this type of experience are attempting to bring out the information and attempting to explore it as, objective, as objectively as possible. You know, and I've even had people say to me, Chris, well, it's like Fox Mulder on the X-Files. I want to believe. Well, I honestly don't think I had a choice about believing. And I don't think that anybody who's experienced the phenomena had a choice in believing. Something was thrust into your reality, reality that completely changed how you perceive your, your status as a human being on this planet, in this universe, inside this metaverse, whatever we describe the space-time continuum that we live in. But that phenomena is attempting to leak out into the vi bigger pool of humanity, both as a warning, because let's face it, some of these beings are malevolent, and as kind of a, a well, maybe a harbinger, because I believe that there are also beings out there that are trying to help us. What do you think about that? I think that's exactly right. I think they are as varied as uh, anything else. Um, and that's why there's different shapes and ships and orbs and everything else it's not just one it's not just the grays visiting us from one place no you've got things coming we've got things coming at us we, we just don't have the the mind power to grasp what's going on out there and we are fed little bits of it at a time is how i see it yeah. to try to educate us but we really defend against that we really don't want to know. And you do have people that are completely sane, productive, successful in their lives. They have homes, families, they carry on, they work, they paid off their mortgage, they did everything in life that you do, raised kids, all of that, that also have had these experiences forced on them, thrust upon them, no choice about it, that are willing to tell you, oh, and by the way, this does happen, it did happen, it exists, it's part of your reality. Now the problem is that, as you said, they are then laughed at, ridiculed, labeled, mm -hmm. and ignored. And that's a shame. And as, as you said, Ken, there's a wonderful time, Pfeiffer, of, um, of world and UFO news, I think, I, I, I don't wanna screw up his name, his, his site, of, uh, name of his site, anyway. He collects all this stuff, but no one comes after him and says, now let's take this as an organized society, a group, um, a university, a science group, government group. Let's organize all this and form one thing where we take all this information and start classifying it in different areas to things we really need to, to pay attention to and listen the things maybe we we're you know unsure about that really happened, but take all the stuff and organize it, and go to the next step. Try to figure out what what to do with it, how to use it, and learn from this knowledge. We don't. 
We have separate guys like Ken and Mufon, which is a joke. And I'm sorry, but it is a joke. Yeah, it it doesn't joke. work. It is a joke. They do nothing with the material. You never hear about it. You have other guys trying to do it. It's so scattered and disorganized that we actually, I, I watched a show put out by Mufon, and they were making these claims. There's 600,000, whatever, this 8,000 reports over here every year. You have no idea, Mufon, what you're talking about. Because people either don't tell you or tell a whole bunch of little people, like send me some, send Ken some, send people, you know. The, the information is scattered all over the world. So we have no idea at all, people, what the numbers really are. We have no clue to how many viewing sightings encounters are actually going on because there's no organized place to collect, separate, investigate, and, and make sense of this data. There is nothing being done with the data. It's shot out into the world via the internet and lost. Well, I and so the that, problem that's what we actually know. Nothing. The, the problem I have with this is that MUFON, which for years has not released any meaningful publications or reports, MUFON can't even get a newsletter out the door. I belong to MUFON. I couldn't even get a newsletter out of them. You had to go on their website and download it as a PDF. It was horrible. But MUFON has now simply taken all of their data and invested it in doing a TV show, just like everybody else is doing now, as entertainment. So whether MUFON, as a legitimate research organization, has done uh, the kind of work that would preserve and archive and provide analysis on this data, at the end of the day, as far as I'm concerned, they squandered it by doing this TV show because it simply feeds in to the whole woo-woo mentality of people being entertained, quote, and trained by the media, which minimizes the entire concept of why we're doing UFO research in the first place, which is to get the experiences down. I don't give a shit about the craft anymore. I mean, it's interesting. We have plenty of pictures, but we have the experiences of tens of thousands of people across the planet. And I know because I've talked to them, you've talked to them. I went to a conference. I couldn't get away from people who won wanted to talk about their experiences it was it was a burning issue with these people to bring this this data out because for the most part they're not going to be heard anywhere else and so the alternative media people like us are the only place to bring it out but this we're talking about experience we're talking about something that's unquantifiable which is the human consciousness and the interaction with intelligences that are quote, quote non-normal well, non-normal is the new normal now, folks. I hate to break it to you. The veil is ripped. Everything's beginning to leak out around the seams. And the people who we've been talking about, the people like us that have been reporting the data, reporting the experiences, having the experiences, are the front guard of what is coming to this planet. Absolutely. And you can make believe you don't want to know about it. You can fear it, you can do all that, or you can try to educate yourself so you can deal with it. And those, those again, it's all choice. But the fact that there is no place for us to actually find the figures or know what's really going on out there is by not by accident. That's a planned, well placed you know, a thing that was done to us. They don't want us to have those numbers and those figures because we couldn't handle it. There's that much of it out there. I mean, all of us know somebody who has seen something they didn't understand or went through something they, they didn't understand. Yeah. So, and if you haven't, you're lying. You do know. Somebody told you, and you may just have uh, said, oh, Lucy's crazy. She thinks, you know, she saw a UFO in the sky or, or you know, an, an alien or some kind of strange being, you know, well, she probably did. And it's you who's the, 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 the nut job because you refuse to budge out of the cave <laughs> and understand yeah. that it's part of life. It's part of reality. These things all around. We're just too dumb to understand them. And we want to grasp on and hold on to that. 
We don't want to know. We don't want to know. We're so frightened, I guess. I don't know. Me? I want to know what's going on. I have a better chance of surviving it all, if I know. And that I had to learn the hard way in life because I had no choice. I had things, That's you right. know, yeah. thrust upon me that I had to deal with. You either deal with them or you die. So That's you right. deal with them. Yeah. So um, I, I, I don't know what to, to, to say, but move on is like I feel like, you know, Edison and J.P. Morgan, is that was his, his, what they did to Tesla? Well, yeah. move on doing that to the UFO. Well, that's exactly crime. what has happened. Right. It's a crime against humanity because they're not allowing even a new organization. What they did was privatize the space program, give it over to all these private guys to go do whatever they want to, plus billions of our dollars to do it with. And they all know what's up. They know what's going on. They're in contact with these beings, but they are keeping us all uh, very dumb, naive, and left out. And it's a big job for them to constantly keep us apart until we willingly just went along with it. And we like to be entertained. We like a good science fiction story. We like to get goosebumps and be frightened. And it never dawns on us that these reports and these sightings are real. And you take and throw them in with all the ones that are not, and you make it a TV show like this new MUFON show, which, by the way, they're telling the same old stories. A lot of the, the new MUFON TV show is awful. And in fact, they took one show that they did a documentary about many years ago and then retold the story with a new actress this time and completely lied and changed it all up. So you can't, you know, they, they're not to be trusted. So there's no place to go with all this data and it's just being lost. Even to MUFON, who's trying to control everything, it's lost to them as well, because they put down people like you and I and Ken. They, they ignore us. Instead of saying, oh God, I'd love to get a whole of your material and put it all together with whatever else we have and talk to the abductees you know, and well, no, they, 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 you know, push you out, blackball you, even sometimes shut you down. Well, it is to, I guess, our credit that we continue to press on doing this despite the fact that we don't have any support and the fact that uh, basically we're still ridiculed and hung out to dry. I have one more story I want to cover real quick on the show tonight because I promised at the top of the hour that I would, I would go through this. Um, again, this is an article that is on my website, offplanetradio.com. And it is Robert Stanley reporting on the Malibu gravity well UFO based doorway to the lower world. And real quickly, what Stanley is reporting on in his research for an upcoming book is that the lower world portals, which were guarded on the, on the California coastline by the Shumash Indian Antaps, which were priests, and these priests were aware of these three worlds which communicate with each other. The upper world inhabitants, which are peaceful and rarely interact with humans. Interesting that. The lower world beings who attempt to enter our world and cause harm to humans. He says that the Chumash were meth method yeah, methodically exterminated by Spanish Catholic priests who established the missions between 1776 to 1824 thus leaving these portals unprotected and open for invasion by the entities. This rift that was opened is, according to Bob Stanley, an unguarded portal for lower, lower dimensional entities that have invaded our own middle world. This actually corresponds to what Duncan O'Finian's been talking about as well with CERN, and the idea that the Hadron Collider in Switzerland is probably some kind of massive super portal that's being designed to bring these entities into our world space-time continuum. Uh, Chris, what are your thoughts on this in terms of what Bob Stanley reports? I don't know how much you know about what Duncan's talked about, but even the Large Hadron Collider, why have we poured hundreds of billions of dollars into science projects like the Hadron Collider at CERN if uh, all it is is a gigantic magnetron. 
you know, I don't have enough information to, to make Nobody an intelligent does, really. remark, but yeah, but I think it's very, the, the, the CERN thing always concerned me because any way you look at it, I find that it's a very dangerous piece of uh, equipment, let's call it that. <laughs> um, and as far as the thing in California, that's very interesting to me. I would like to learn a lot more about that. Because immediately when you start talking, shadow people popped into my head as probable um, possible way for them to easily enter and and leave or whatever you know th- th- this this pl- plane of existence. And well, I, I you know think I'd really like to hear what that man has to say. Well, actually, there's two interviews on my website, Chris, at offplanetradio.com. You can go to the front page, scroll down, there's a search box there. Type in Robert Stanley, Malibu, and the two shows, the two two-hour interviews I did with Bob Stanley will come up. And there's articles on the website as well that attend that. And we're going to try and get Robert Stanley back. I think he's presently in Japan to talk about this. But my, my point in bringing some of this up is to say that there's a thread through what we've been talking about tonight. And that is that the reality that we grew up in, those of us who lived in this post-World War II period up until, I'll say, maybe the 1980s, we don't live in that world anymore. The sun doesn't look no. the same. The people weren't the same. The world that we live in, it is a rapid, it's in a rapid transition right now. The things that we're talking about on our blogs, on these shows that we do together, are pointing to something in the reality stream that people need to wake up and begin to see. There is a lesson to be learned about the impending arc of consciousness for humanity, and there is a warning sign that humanity is in deadly danger of being converted into something which will no longer be human. So this is kind of a twofold attack. And and people that are young today don't understand. I, I often talk about when I was a kid in the 50s and looked at the sky and, every, and I was outside playing all the time. I grew up in the country along a river by the Atlantic Ocean that led out to the Atlantic Ocean that the sky not only was completely different in appearance but at a different altitude. It was much higher up than it is now, now people don't look at me like I'm crazy. The sky was not where it is today. It was higher. And everyone my age, I say that to, goes, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. It was a different, complete different scenario then. So was, of course, the clouds and the color of the sky and the sunsets were different. And they dramatically changed through my lifetime. To now, it's lower, different colors. Of course, I don't know what's going up on the sky there. I don't know who's doing what, but it's not the normal I grew up with. And it kind of feels almost like we've been encapsulated in, in, in a press down, almost like there's a dome over us that wasn't there when I was young. It was more open and wide, and you could feel it. Oh, it was my a whole gosh. Different you, just hit on, you just bookmarked that. Because we're running out of time here, but you just hit on a fascinating subject. I want to talk about that some more. You and I need to have a conversation about the dome. <laughs> that goes yeah. into a lot of things that are going on. Good God, we made it through two hours. I didn't think I was going to make it through the first 15 minutes. It looks like mm-hmm. uh, this is a wrap-up for this show. I want to thank you, Chris Holly, for coming on. I want to thank all of you who listen and will hear this. And uh, while we may have been a bit... Uh, on the side of emphatic about some of the things we're talking about. We are definitely in a time of transition. We definitely need to pay attention to what's going on around us, up in the skies, on the ground, and all around you. This is Off Planet TV. I'm Randy Moggins with Chris Holly. The truth is out there. It's inside you. Keep looking for it. We'll be back with another show next week. You are listening to Off Planet Radio at offplanetradio.net and offplanetradio.com.